In this primer, we discuss how the CAPEX cycles for both the Baby Bells and the cable companies have become far more cyclical after the passage of the Telecom Deregulation Act of 1996. Prior to 2006, the Baby Bell spending on CapEx was fairly fixed as a percentage of their revenues. In February of that year, after Congress passed the Telecom Deregulation Act of 1996, the Baby Bells underwent a brief period of complacency as they tried to evaluate the threat posed to them by the newly created CLEX. Once the Bells decided that the CLEX were a real threat, they significantly increased the percentage of expenditures on CapEx as a percentage of their overall revenues as they began to beef up their networks to counter the threat. This in turn helped fuel some of the telecom bubble during the 1990s. This fear peaked in 2000 just before the first of the CLEX began to undergo funding difficulties. As the CLEX began to go bankrupt after 2000, the percentage of capex on revenues that the baby bells spent began to come down once again. Although a new threat was already looming from cable, there was once again significant complacency in the part of the baby bells relative to this new threat. It was only after the bells realized that the cable companies were going to start to take away significant numbers of their voice customers that they began to ramp up their spending on Fios and Uverse. In the past, the fear complacency cycle between the cable companies and the telcos typically ran counter-cyclical. By that we mean that when one group was particularly worried, the other was usually complacent. For example, when the cable companies first started to deploy voice equipment, the RBOX were adamant that their customer base would remain loyal and would not buy voice services from the cable companies. Likewise, when the telcos first began to offer video to cable company customers, Cable companies swore that the RBOX would never be able to make these pro programs reach scale. What is unusual today about the fear complacency cycle is that it appears that the fear seems to be peaking from both sets of carriers. However, the cable companies are responding slightly differently than the RBOX. While committed to spending to deploy DOCSIS 3.0 equipment, the cable companies have decided to cut CapEx in other areas, specifically maintenance to fund this DOCSIS transition. By doing so, they hope to avoid lowering earnings guidance by not dramatically increasing overall their total CapEx expenditures. Whether they'll be able to do this and deploy DOCSIS successfully over the long term remains to be seen. We believe as that competition continues to increase between these two carriers, their CapEx cycles are likely headed higher in the near term.